Welcome to Model Steam Engines for Beginners. This is number 5 and it's coal firing a model steam boiler. There is nothing better in the world of model steam engines than to use a coal fired boiler, whether it be on a locomotive or in this case a stationary boiler. There's nothing quite like the sight, sound and smell of these things. The first thing to do is to pump some water into the boiler. Halfway up the gauge glass will be fine and then light the fire. I would normally start the fire with a piece of oily rag, I've got plenty of those laid about the workshop and also around the workshop near the bandsaw, plenty of bits of wood. So just start a simple wood fire first. You may need one of these. This is a centrifugal blower, used for drawing the fire when you initially fire up. Once steam is raised you can remove it from the chimney and use a steam blower to make the draft. My vertical boiler doesn't require a blower, there's enough draft to start the fire. But you need some of this. This is actually Welsh steam coal, but any good quality anthracite will do. And of course you need absolutely gallons of this stuff. Always have some spare water nearby in case of emergency. Once the fire in the firebox has started to take hold, add a little bit more wood. Do not add coal at this stage. And don't add too much wood otherwise you'll put the fire out. It's a good idea to leave the fire hole door open in the early stages of firing. This vertical boiler I have raises steam very quickly. It's not a good idea ever to force the boiler, but when the pressure gets to about 20 pounds per square inch, remove the electrical blower if you're using one, and open the steam blower. You will notice an immediate difference. Initially, open the steam blower fully, but once you get some serious pressure in the boiler, you will need to back off the steam blower, otherwise the boiler will make far too much steam. You can see some water around the top of my boiler at the moment, this is just condensation running down from the cap. You can also see that the pressure's dropped to about 10 psi now. This is because the steam blower uses some pressure. It also uses water, so keep your eye on the water gauge. Have a look at the fire. Yes, the fire is very healthy. It's time to add some coal. There is a definite technique in adding coal to a steam boiler. In the case of this boiler, I would put one shovelful either side, one at the back, one at the front, and then one in the middle. When you finish firing, close the fire hole door immediately. This will prevent cold air from rushing in up the tubes and dropping the pressure. Good quality steam coal is great for a steam boiler and you'll be able to see the pressure gauge shoot up at an alarming rate, much faster than the smaller gas fired boilers. With 20 psi on the clock, the whistle blows quite well. With 60 psi on the clock, it's very loud indeed. Now the fire's looking really good. The water level's correct, so it's time to put some more coal on. But don't go mad, don't fill the firebox right up to the top. This is very bad practice and it's inefficient. One to the left, one to the right, one to the back, one to the front and one in the middle. That way you get an even covering all over the grate. You need to avoid what's called a hole in the fire. Because now when the fire hole door is shut, all the draft comes up through the grate, pulled up by the blower or the engine exhaust if it's routed to the chimney. Once again, always keep your eye on the water level. Now you see the pressure really climbing. The blow-off point for this is set at 70 psi, and it should have a red line at the 70 mark, but I never got around to doing this. Please bear in mind that now the pressure on the gauge is higher, the blower will be really roaring, as you opened it fully in the early stages of the firing process. So close the blower, don't turn it off altogether, just shut it down to a very low level. If you have too much blower, the fire will get too hot and the safety valve will be blowing off continuously. Have a look at the fire, there's a very bright point. So put some coal on top of the bright point and it will ignite very quickly and give you even more steam. Time now to try the water pump. This is a weir type pump and the first thing to do with it is to open the cylinder drain cocks as the first steam that hits the cylinder condenses the water and will probably hydraulic lock. Once the drain cocks are shut, the pump works very well. Here it's on bypass, it's just pumping water back to the tank. It doesn't use very much steam really, and it exhausts up the chimney so it helps to draw the fire. Here you see me shutting the bypass valve, and what's going to happen now is water will start to be pumped into the boiler, and because the fire is very hot, you won't get much of a pressure drop. In fact, the boiler's blowing off. The safety valve is set to blow off at 70 pounds per square inch and it will blow off for about 20 psi and kick back in at 50. 
To stop it blowing off, simply open the fire hole door. You will notice if you open and shut the fire hole door with the blower active, there is a distinct difference in tone. You can hear when the air has been drawn through the fire, rather than through the fire hole door and straight up the tubes. Now you will also notice that at this pressure the whistle is much louder and a good bit drier, not as much water coming out of it. Talking about water, I must put a caution on this one. I've done this on purpose, honest I've done it on purpose. I've overfilled the boiler. Now this is nowhere near as bad as running out of water, but it's not good because water will get to the engine and possibly cause a hydraulic lock. And also if you're driving a model steam locomotive around the track pulling passengers, you will grind to a halt and it's all very embarrassing. You can see that water is everywhere. It's coming out of the top cap of the boiler, running down the boiler and making a mess. It's coming out of the chimney. It's just coming out of everywhere. And it leaves really bad water marks on the boiler, as you can see here. The water inside the boiler is clean, but when it leaves the boiler and goes up the chimney and onto the top of the boiler, it gathers some of the products of combustion and ash and things like that. So what I needed to do here was drop the pressure by running the engine, but not pump any water in. And I was just playing about, really. I kept removing the inlet pipe so the engine really went fast as it was starved of water, and then putting it back in and watching it equalise. Look at the state of the boiler, what a mess. But anyway, at least you know what happens if you overfill the boiler. This is a good sign, a bright glow in the ash pan. And this is a good fire. This is really what the fire wants to look like when you're running the boiler. Because the fire's good and the water level's good, I'll take this opportunity to wipe some mess off the boiler after showing what happens when you overfill the boiler. There is a definite rhythm when using a coal-fired boiler. First of all, check the water level. Is that okay? Yes. Check the fire. Does the fire need some coal on? If so, put some coal on the fire, but never ever put water in the boiler and coal on the fire at the same time. You will get a massive pressure drop if you do this, because it takes a short while for the coal to ignite properly and give the heat. By using a blower or the engine's exhaust, you're drawing oxygen through the fire. So you must make sure that the fire is solid with no holes in it where oxygen can get straight through without aiding the combustion. This is the end of the run. I just let the fire go out. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.